common, and that is we both have very spiritual, strong wives that keep us in place, right? Would you come, Brother Israel, give him a big round of applause. Take your living. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. You know, um, I'm very excited this morning because after 35 years in education, uh, I started as a teacher, uh, moved up to be a bilingual coordinator, moved up to be an assistant principal, principal, and then, and then God gave me the opportunity to serve the state of New Jersey as superintendent of schools in Highland Park, New Jersey. So, you know, it's been a long uh, trajectory uh, and a beautiful journey. And I would like to share a, a, a story with you. We all have stories, right? When you live life and the journey of life, we have many stories in different seasons in our lives. And so I want to share a small story with you that really impacted our lives. And it had to do with giving, the heart of giving. It had to do with tithing of our offering to God. So this short story has three parts. The first part is, I was knocked down, but not out. Amen? Then I was living a blessed life, but I wasn't progressing. I wasn't multiplying. And then God had to humble me again to put me in a place where I can continue to grow, particularly in his word. And the last part of this is living a victorious life. So with three parts. Well, it begins the following way. Uh, when Iris and I, my beautiful, beloved wife, who I love deal with all my heart, when we met, uh, after several years, we decided to uh, buy a home in New Jersey because the kids were growing up. We had three daughters, three beautiful daughters, and they were growing up, and we didn't want them to you know, be raised in the environment where we were at, so we bought the home. Not knowing, I mean, I didn't know anything about purchasing a home, and uh, I think we didn't qualify for a regular mortgage. And so they presented to me a wonderful opportunity to go with a variable mortgage, one of those adjusted mortgages. And I think we started with about 2%, 3%, which was beautiful. And we were happy in our home, and we were paying the mortgage, and everything was going very smoothly. But we noticed that throughout the years, the interest rate was climbing up. It was growing and growing and growing to the point that it almost went up to 11%. I think it was 10.5, 10.6. And at that point, I was being squeezed. I felt squeezed. I didn't know what to do. We were barely, barely paying the mortgage. And so I was praying to the Lord. I says, Lord, what's going on? Help me. And then one day I, you know, I come home and I'm hearing a lot of noise in the kitchen and everybody seems to be very happy. And I see my wife with the three kids and she has a can of sausages. And she told the girls, listen, we have sausages tonight. Who wants sausages? And everybody, me, me, I want sausages. Help me, help me, you know, uh, you know, cut up the, the sausages. And I saw her cutting up the sausages and putting them in the pan and putting sauce and a little bit of rice. And I knew at that point that we were in deep trouble. I went upstairs. Brothers and sisters, I went upstairs. And I know some of us have gone through this. And I fell on my knees. And I said, dear Lord, help me. I do not know what to do anymore. And I was, you know, the verses from the Bible were coming out. Because it's amazing when you're in trouble. When you have that need, that's when we really come to God. We expose our heart to him. And I was saying, Lord, please help me. You promised me that you would never leave me nor forsake me. And I remember saying, uh, you know, um, Jeremiah 33, 3, where God says, call me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So the first part of that, and I really believe that, the first part was, call me and I will answer. And about two or three weeks later, God gave me a message. As I was reading the Bible, God said, do what you know how to do best. That was the message. The next day, a parent comes up to me from a different school, comes up to me and says, Mr. Soto, I'm looking for a tutor for my daughter. Would you recommend anyone? And that was it. I said, I can tutor your daughter. 
And so I started tutoring, and I remember charging her $10 an hour. Now remember, you know, tutoring is very expensive. But I was, I felt that I was doing God's work, and I knew she did not have that kind of money. So she presented to me with other clients, and I started tutoring other kids $10 an hour. Well, within two years, the $10 an hour became $50 and $60 an hour. And I must have had a good 20 to 30 people. So I was one busy man, and things were getting better, okay? So throughout that journey, um, things were getting better, but I felt that there was something wrong. You know, we used to go to church, and we used to give, but we were never tithers. But we gave, and I felt satisfied, and we gave. And we continued our life, and I felt like if I was on a treadmill. You know when you go on a treadmill, right, and you're running? And it feels like you're going somewhere. And you're getting all excited. And you're going somewhere. Whew, whew. I mean, you think you're an athlete. You know, I'm running the marathon. And then now, you know, they, 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 they have these, um, these screens where they show you, right? And, and, you're, and you're looking at these screens and being entertained. And you think you're going somewhere. But you're really not going anywhere. That's how I felt. I felt like if I was in a treadmill trying to get somewhere but staying in the same place. Now, that place was a blessed place, but I wasn't growing. I wasn't moving out of that place. I wasn't stepping up and stepping out. And so life became like being in a labyrinth, right? And I'm going and I'm, I'm trying to find my way out. I'm trying to find my way to victory. I'm trying to find my way to progress. And it took a long time. And then once after that, then the other blow comes in. You know that blow. 2008 was the crash. And that crash devastated us because we lost half of what we had in the market. And I said, Lord, what are you teaching me? What are you teaching me? I lost half of my money. And I was five years, five to six years to retirement until one day we went to a church and we heard a sermon. And this preacher said, I'm going to share with you certain truths that will change your life, that will change your family, that will change your finances, that will change you if you just open up your heart and listen. Well, I was listening because I was in dire straits at that time. And so he shared the following passages. And please um, join me in looking at these passages. The first passage is, uh, we're looking at Matthew 6, 19. All right. Matthew 6, 19. Treasures in heaven. Do not store up, your, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. That tore me up because my treasure was in the stock market. That was my treasure. My treasure was having fancy cars and fancy clothes and fancy shoes at the time. And although I was serving the Lord, because you serve the Lord and you say, and that's the excuse, you say, well, I'm blessed. That's the excuse. And you want everyone to see that you're blessed. But my heart was in the wrong place. Join me now in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. Sowing generously. So now my heart is not in the right place. Right? My treasure was in the wrong place. And now God is talking to me and says, and says the following. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly nor under compulsion for God loves 
God loves a cheerful giver, okay, whose heart is in his giving, whose heart is in his giving. And the last passage, please join me, Luke 6, 37. Luke 6, 37 says the following. Do not judge. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Look at the following passage. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you what three things these three passages have in common to give and what else the heart all three passages talk about your heart see giving is a heart thing and I needed to understand that and learn that giving was a heart thing and when you give Judgment is going to get back to you. When you give, when it's coming out of you, condemnation, the Bible says it's going to come back to you. See, and also in all three passages, the Lord does not say a word about money. It doesn't talk about money. It's talking about having the heart to give. See, God doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our money. But there's one thing for sure. If God has your money, he has your heart. Amen? That's what we learn. Amen. And lastly, so we decided, we got it. I said, Lord, I get it. And we decided to tithe. So my wife, Iris, says, oh, she, we were excited about tithing because we felt in our heart that things were going to start changing, that we're going to be moving, that we were going to be stepping out of that treadmill that we were going to find a way out of that labyrinth. And we started tithing. Now, when we started tithing, I said, no, you know, we have to tithe 10%. You know that, right? And I said, oh, all right, we're going to tithe 10%. All right, so let me see. This is my check. And so let me, uh, we can tithe percent of that. And my wife said, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong. We got to tithe 10% of the gross. When she said that, I went, oh, mm. Oh, man. I felt like I didn't have pockets. Because, you know, uh, the gross. But we started. We started tithing on the gross. You know, she told me, she asked me, Israel, would you like to know how much for tithing? And I sincerely told her, don't tell me. I don't want to know because God says that he wants a cheerful giver. <laughs> and I want to give cheerfully. Amen. Amen. So I leave you with the following. I'll leave you with the following. God wants your very best. He wants our very best. God doesn't want any leftovers. He wants your very best. And we have to open our heart to give him our very best. And I assure you, I assure you, I've experienced it. Almost losing my house, losing my money. Today, we are, we are most prosperous than we ever have been since the day that we decided to give to the Lord what is his. Amen? So I will show you, you give your 10% and God will bless the 90. However, multiply. Remember I said that I wasn't multiplying? However, the Lord says that if you give beyond the 10%, that's where the multiplication comes in. That's where the multiplication goes in. Amen? So let's have, join me in the following prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just come before you in thanksgiving and in praise, Father. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you may open our hearts to give. To give to you, to love each other, to hold each other. Thank you for the life that you give us through giving. For the word says that God gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe it shall not perish but have everlasting life. So we thank you for giving us life. We will continue with that life, giving 
all to you, giving our very best to you, not reluctantly, not out of compulsion.